Hi everyone, this is just a brief tutorial for those of you who aren't familiar or might need a little refresher or just want to be comfortable with it of how to log into Zoom. So for fall semester, it's going to be really important to be comfortable with using Zoom, logging in regularly and those kinds of things because all of our classes will be on Zoom. All of our course meetings, um, any office hours, any outside of classroom meetings will be on Zoom because we are not having any face-to-face -face time. So I want to make sure that you have a good sense of how to do that. And so I want to make sure this video is super accessible. Um, we'll go over just a little bit of how to find Zoom through Canvas, uh, where else you might find Zoom, um, and just some of the quick tricks and tips that you can use to make your Zoom experience as successful as possible. And if you do have any questions, there are some other tips and tricks in a um, document that I'll be posting to Canvas um, to give you some more advice. Um, there are also lots of resources online. You can talk to your peers and you can always talk to me if you have any questions. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your browser and open up Canvas. Um, well, there's two ways that you can access any Zooms, any Zoom meetings we have, either by using the Zoom app itself, which will allow you to join or schedule a meeting. Um, you can also see what meetings you have scheduled coming up. Um, those kinds of things. So if you have Zoom on your laptop or your device, then you can have in here is where you can go. To, so I'm going to go back to home. Um, but you can see what you might have going on. You can change your settings here. So this little, let me show you guys how I did that one more time. So if you open up Zoom here, you can change your settings. So you can do things like set a default skin tone, um, look at your accessibility options in terms of what uh, subtitles might look at, look at your audio and visual options, sharing the screen, your chat function, all those things. In profile, you can set a default picture here. So when you're video is turned off, that picture is going to be what shows up, um, those kinds of things. You can also look at your keyboard shortcuts, which is nice. So if you want to um, have a convenient shortcut for muting and unmuting your audio, you could set that up there. Um, so you can always join a meeting here by going into join meeting and then you'd put in the meeting ID number. And then this is where you would put whatever you want your name to show up as. Fun, helpful tip. Pick something that you want everybody else in class to see. Remember, you know, um, we all want to have fun, but this is a formal class. These recordings are going to be there. These video chats are recorded, so um, make sure it's appropriate, school appropriate. Um, and then you go ahead and join. If there's a waiting room, then you might have to wait to be let in. Or if there's a password, it's going to prompt you after you say join to um, go ahead and put that password in. So you can always enter into your Zoom meetings for class through Zoom. Another way to do it is to go in through here we go, Canvas. So here is an old Canvas site from last semester. Um, so if I go into your course, this is uh, an old Econ 1B course. And if you look at the student view, you'll see down here at the bottom, there is Zooms. And in the Zoom tab, you can go in and that's where you can access either your upcoming Zoom meetings or previous recordings. So this class ended last semester, so you can see there are no upcoming meetings. If we did, they'd be listed here with a start time, the meeting ID number, and a button to click. Um, here are previous meetings, so you can go through and see the previous course meetings. This class had meetings uh, Mondays and Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Um, the ID meeting room was always the same because it was my meeting room. And then you can also go into cloud recordings and actually go back and see an old um, course meeting that we might have had in the past. You could listen to just, you can see the whole video or you can just listen to the audio. So maybe if you've got not a great reception, you just want to do the audio or if you're going to be working, you just want to listen to it. Um, if you do get the video, you'll see the full effect. And so I'm just going to kind of show you guys real quick here what that looks like. Um, most of these recordings will have a little bit of silence in the beginning and the video off for a bit of time just to wait till everyone gets settled. Um, you can see the chat function coming through on the side where I might be answering questions about the material. And um, so that's a great uh, tool for you guys. So you can go in and see old recordings. You can go in and see any upcoming meetings that might be set in here. Um, and so what I will have set up in every class is a recurring meeting 
for those course meetings. So if we meet Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 1.30, that's going to be showing up here in the start time, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. There's going to be one for Monday, one for Wednesday, one for Friday, recurring all through the semester. And so that's another easy way to access um, Zoom meetings as they occur, um, looking at what the schedule of previous meetings was, and then the recordings. And one quick note about these Zoom recordings is if someone logs into a meeting um, not during class time, it will create a recording. And so I think in this class we had that happen a couple of times um, where someone would say, uh, log in on a Friday just to see, and it will create these little short, you know, one minute or five second recordings. So you can ignore those and I'll go through and delete them out as quickly as I can. Um, but otherwise, everything on Canvas you should be somewhat familiar with. Um, every class will have modules broken down with an introductory module and then a module for every new subject. Within that module, you'll have any materials, any PowerPoint slides, any quizzes, any assignments, any additional worksheets or other information will all be broken down by module. And then you can also go over here and find, say, announcements for the class in the announcements tab um, and I will periodically new, use the announcement announcements to let you guys know something that might be going on which you can comment on um, you can see all the assignments for the class will be online in the assignments um, tab and then also any discussions we might have will be in the discussions tab and so do spend some time getting to see what all is available in canvas I use canvas really heavily now that we're online, because I think it's nice to have a one-stop shop where you can go through and check everything. Um, you might want to, early in the semester before things get too far along, check your settings within Canvas. Um, so things like um, whether or not you get mo notifications if there's a change in a discussion, um, whether or not you get notifications when you get a message. So you can send messages through Canvas um, in addition to through email, those kinds of things. Um, so you want to make sure that your notifications are the way you want them. The last thing I want to show you is what it would look like in a meeting. So I'm going to go over here to a, oh, sorry, leave student view, and then show you what it would look like in a practice meeting. So I've got my um, courses over here and I'm going to go into online development course. And here you can scroll down and again see I've got my Zoom tab. And now when I open up the Zoom tab here, I've scheduled a recurring meeting for every Tuesday at 1. And so I can go in and there are no previous meetings um, there are no cloud recordings because this hasn't happened yet, but um, there is a meeting today at one o'clock and I can go ahead and click start meeting or go to the meeting and that's going to go ahead and activate the Zoom app on my device, whether it's your laptop or your cell phone or your tablet. It will ask me if I want to join with computer audio or test my speaker and microphone. So if you're on a device, you want to use that computer audio. If you're on your phone, you can use the phone call. Um, and I'll have the settings set up that your audio and visual will be muted upon entry. Um, so you'll want to go ahead and check that. And in many cases, it's going to be your choice if you want to mute or unmute your audio or video, depending on what how you want to participate. If there are specific situations where I expect you to participate by adding in audio or video, I will let you know. Um, they will be recorded and there will tend to be a password associated with them. There will also be a link for most of these where you can go ahead and um, have some sort of, um, there's a, uh, you can open the Zoom room from a link, but I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and open up my video and here's my audio, which I don't need because I'm by myself. Um, but now you can see this is what, um, this is what, the Zoom would look like on a laptop. The interface is a little bit different on tablets and phones. So on tablets and phones, your shortcuts are going to be a little different. You'll want to, you'll have to swipe through uh, for some of the views and some things. Um, but, but for a laptop or desktop computer, it's like this. You'll be able to see who all is in the meeting. Um, I'm the host here. 
Um, you can have this chat window open and the chat window is a nice way to ask questions if you don't want to unmute your microphone or if I'm in the middle of lecturing, you can ask a question in the chat window and I can go back and see it. You can also, um, I can't because I'm the only one here, but you can also select it to be not to everyone, but to a specific person. So if you're working on a project with someone and you wanna ask them like, hey, what's going on with this? Um, you can go ahead and use that function there. If you want to ask me a question that you don't want everyone to see, that's a fair option. Um, but generally, I encourage you guys to go ahead and, and make your questions public so that anybody who might also have that question um, can find out. Um, you can also, of course, always close these. Make that small. Close that. Um, there are polls, so I might periodically ask you guys a question. Um, and so you'll have a pop-up window that asks you, you know, pick A, B, C, or D, something like that. Um, and then you can also select your view, which is hard to do right now, but you'll have a couple of different options of whether you want the speaker to be the first view, or if there's a meeting or we're doing an office hours, you can select what I call the Brady Bunch view, where it's a lot of smaller cameras, um, that kind of thing. And again, everybody's doing a lot more of this stuff than they ever did before because of COVID-19. So if you've got questions or really specific things, um, there are resources on uh, campus. If you go on to the campus IRT website, uh, Sac State's camp, um, internet, uh, or, um, the technology resources website, they've got videos on how to use Canvas. YouTube has tons of guides. There are tons of pieces of information out there for a lot of these shortcuts and tricks and tips you can use. These are just a couple of things that I find useful. Um, you can unmute yourself, which is dangerous because I'm recording and I have a second recording for the recording. Um, and then one last thing that I like is these. So you can always, if I'm asking a question, um, give a thumbs up if you do understand or you think something makes sense. If not, I might ask you guys to give me some feedback. And so that's always a quick, easy, useful tool. So that is my brief introduction into how to use Zoom. Um, when you leave a meeting, you can end it for everyone if you're the meeting host, which I will be for most cases. Um, you can also just leave the meeting. Um, but if you have any questions about Zoom, please don't hesitate to contact me. Contact someone from IRT, our Campus Technology Resource Center. Um, anything that you might not be able to get answered on the internet, you can always ask one of your faculty, uh, one of your professors, or campus technology. If you're having issues with devices, with connectivity, with something like that, let us know as soon as possible because there are a lot of solutions out there. Um, otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.